Ah, welcome back my uh, gardening friends. Well, it's about time we had a look at the uh, raised beds uh, on plot one, see how they've done. They're over 12 months old now, probably 18 months. And I'm pleased with how things are growing. Not happy about the rats, but pleased with how things are growing. So let's go and have a little look. So we're down by the fruit cage. This was the first raised bed that I started to build. I'll put the playlist uh, at, uh, at the end. And we, in 2020, we had uh, the long beans uh, on both of these beds, but I decided to have a permanent bed of asparagus. Uh, these are the underground uh, worm farms, which help feed the uh, fresh food, food waste in there, and then the worms uh, kept happy, so we can we don't have to dig. Uh, we've mulched with uh, the wood chips and uh, leaf mould which helps to keep uh, some, not all of the weeds down but regular picking helps and we've got some seeds on here which I won't be saving this year I've got more than enough uh, asparagus and uh, probably too much but it was just nice to have a bed that we could just weed and didn't have to worry too much about so this ended up being a pea bed we planted some green manure which I think has helped everything seems to be growing well I kept some of the green manure beans and let them grow on the uh, rats and mice have uh, stripped everyone off so we've got none for seed I've uh, popped a few uh, not traps but I'm feeding my rats uh, with sweet potatoes and uh, peanuts I hope they enjoy those I am hoping to keep this as a permanent bean bed so the peas beans etc but if you can find a space fill it uh, brassicas uh, have uh, been in this one this year I'm really pleased with this uh, graffiti F1 from DT Brown that's the best cauliflower that I've really grown and then we've got uh, quite a few sprouts down there uh, the net is just to stop the pigeons landing on top of the brassicas as you can see I need to do I need to stake them really uh, I'm not too worried about caterpillars at this stage I'll keep checking and keep taking them off and as you can see this one is now three scaffold planks high to my original two the permanent bed will stay as two because I'll never reach the beans else but my intentions are to make uh, all these three high that's why I left the uh, corner posts supports in it's a better height to work and it doesn't cost me nothing to fill these beds because of the material the wood chips, the leaf mould, the found compost. Uh, this bed has never been topped up and as you can see it's settled by about six inches, uh, 150 millimetres. I've put the Jerusalem artichokes here in the containers away from the fruit cage so that I remember to water them. And like we've said, if we find a space, we'll fill it some of the shed wars peas that I'm saving for seed if they don't get eaten the oak trees the squirrels must have found these bags that were fly tipped and buried their nuts and they've been coming up all over the allotment so we've uh, been helping ourselves the uh, cobra beans uh, coming on really well now plentiful of those and like we said before find a space fill it and 
here we have some volunteer turnips. They must have gone to seed. They did bolt, it's a Shed Wars variety and they bolted far too quickly. Or, <laughs> I didn't pick them early enough. I did a whole bed of the pointed cabbage variety. Uh, really pleased with those. I thought they may have uh, gone over very quickly, but they haven't. And uh, this is where I've cut them off and then you end up uh, with uh, the babies, the pups. Just gives you that uh, extra meal perhaps when you don't want uh, a full one and a little bit of tidying up there to do a successional sowing there of peas that haven't been uh, supported and they don't like it if you don't support them they uh, tend just to uh, die off so hopefully now the workload has uh, dropped we will uh, have a little bit more, bit more time. Small of the uh, graffiti F1s, another six there, and uh, and oh, cauliflower autumn giant. I've only got one. I fried uh, some of the seeds and then only got one germinator. The rest, so we'll see how that does. But that was uh, highly recommended by Bill and Val. On the other side of the. Sprouts. We've still got some beetroot, they're massive now, but uh, they'll stay in the ground as and when uh, we need them. And we've got next door's uh, squash plants uh, using uh, the fence as a, a nice support. And this is bed eight, and the, uh, the kale <coughs> is doing quite well. I haven't been keeping an eye on it been taking the leaves but I think uh, we've got a few little caterpillars I think they're more than likely oh what's this here look yeah is that a or is that the stem that's the stem look silly me uh, but uh, yeah another successional sowing of uh, long beans I've probably done too many again again we learn uh, from our uh, mistakes and uh, the lettuce here so has soon gone to seed. And I'm just a little bit behind on successional sowing of uh, lettuce. These are some of the tomatoes that we didn't have room for in the uh, polytunnel, which you will have seen in a previous video that should have popped across uh, on the cards. So we've got a mixture here of uh, cobra French beans and uh, starlet long beans. And, uh, they're just uh, starting to uh, starting to form. So we'll go to bed seven. This is just a pallet collar. Sorry, pallet bed lined uh, with some. Uh, Corex uh, boarding to hold the soil in place. So we've got um, seven of the scaffold plank beds. This was just a temporary one because we've got lots of soil and we'd run out of scaffold planks. We still haven't managed to source any at the right price. Yes, I'm going to buy some. This is my permanent potato bed. So these potatoes were planted in the autumn and uh, they're done very well and I think it's about time we uh, removed the horns to stop any rot and I literally pull them out of the uh, ground I don't cut them off that saves the rot or any potential blight getting to uh, our tubers so that's the end of the actual raised beds now we're into the uh, raised cut pallet collar beds so on plot three we've got 17 of these pallet collar raised beds all four high so 17 times four whatever it comes to plus uh, a few more that we've managed to salvage now these are my uh, sweet candle carrots we planted them on the 27th of the 5th 
we got away with uh, out getting the motley dwarf virus spread by the carrot willow aphid but uh, I haven't actually harvested any carrots out of this bed but the rats have I thought oh no they're dying off <laughs> they will do <laughs> they had the roots nibbled off them completely they'd literally burrowed down right underneath and was taking them from the bottom I literally touched the soil and it all collapsed most of the soil has gone into the parsnip bed so a little bit disappointing but again uh, you can see they've had a go at that one from the top again uh, the sweet potato and the uh, peanuts just to keep them uh, fed we don't want them to go hungry uh, this year's parsnips doing really well I did an experiment by sowing parsnips in this bed in September they quickly run to seed we had a few harvests they were nice roasted but not nice uh, to steam so I won't be sowing parsnips again uh, in September only my long roots I can afford those to go to seed but it might give them an extra growing time so a good experiment done and well worth it so these are the stir on onions there's one there still growing away because it hadn't flopped over the rest looked a little bit uh, bit dodgy these were grown from sets uh, in the spring so I shan't ever sow sets again to overwinter these are plenty big enough for me and here's some of the wire racks that we're going to be using in the polytunnel acting as little drying areas the only trouble is it's been raining again so this was parsnips in September we had the sturons in this one we had the green courgette zucchinis in this one and the uh, yellow easy pick gold uh, in this bed and they've uh, they've done really well I tried growing them in the polytunnel last year and they do take up a lot of room I've got some more leaves to cut off I don't bother treating them I just cut the leaves off uh, and uh, they can get away with that I'm not too fussed about treating them and I forgot to tell you there's a, a rat's home uh, in here when I watered my condor potatoes for the giant show the water just collapsed the soil and it all shot out uh, the side so basically this year this bed will be emptied and all this will be used to fill up the new pallet collars that we've got uh, elsewhere we'll show you uh, another time so this bed became uh, vacant I can't remember now what was in it uh, possibly oh yes remember it's the garlic the elephant garlic and we had the grizzly shallots in this one and we uh, we've been planting uh, hello we've been planting uh, successional peas uh, I tried throwing a few carrots in but what I need to do is cut some cardboard this, this width the poor germination rate so basically when I put cardboard on top of those seeds look what we got there very sparse in the uh, germination uh, literally nothing on the opposite side and we've got one carrot here I'm not going to blame the seed because so that's the same seed uh, I'll put my uh, banana shallots the long red florence to seed these what seed that I got from Alan from the dawn chorus plot so I'm hoping to get my own seed stock and uh, that so that's what I planted and uh, basically they turned out like shallots but uh, we normally plant them and they they grow to that size but that's the second year what happens in the second year and of course we get uh, the heads and those are some that I've shaved to try and get pips the little green pips to plant these are the bull's blood beetroot I wanted to pull those out but they're supporting the onions at the moment these are the walking onions that I've pulled out I'll be having a look at those uh, one of the carrot beds we've turned into uh, a place uh, to keep the uh, strawberries until we make a new bed for them on plot one and another successional sowing of the pongo 
French beans just there so we've got uh, five beds here three there because then we've got the long roots and on this side we've got two beds we've got that big water tank there that's come in very useful for those carrots and uh, again the rats have been in here and took uh, some of the uh, baby Chantenay and some of the Autumn King. I noticed a few dead leaves, so again, we've uh, we've left them a present to say thank you. Again, poor germination with the carrots, and yet some of them are still coming. So I think they just need a little bit of cover. So these are the Zabroon shallots, again from Alan, from the Dawn Chorus plot. And this is the last sowing of uh, radish. I think they're the uh, April cross. We've uh, already harvested everything else. But they weren't quite ready, but they'll need harvesting very soon. Uh, these are the compost bins that we built. I say compost, they don't actually hold compost. This holds all my cocoa koi that we find. This holds all the compost and that we find that's got the added perlite in. This bay has all my pots from this year, from my homemade compost. And this is the uh, leaf mould which is completely empty now. And all this area here for water drops into this barrel which is uh, again full after all the rain and then it's all siphoned across so this is a full storage area that's why I'm able to put things on top and these are the strawberries that we got from slicing the skin off the fruits shop-bought fruits I've uh, taken all the flowers off I've taken all the the runners off And we'll see what they give us if uh, we get a nice big strawberry but these containers were found and they've uh, come in very useful I'll be able to pick these up hopefully and get them in the polytunnel over the winter and hopefully get a nice early crop the uh, wildlife area here is maturing nicely now that's below my uh, roots so it gets a little bit of shade I haven't seen any uh, life in there but no doubt there is and the uh, pallets make a suitable shelf for a few more strawberries we've got lots of wood here that needs burning we can't burn until october time the rats haven't found this bed yet so hopefully they're okay again more cobra successionally sown uh, but I'm thinking more now is to uh, keep um, or we'll grow the pomgos they stay nice and low they're a dwarf variety and they are uh, prolific so successionally sowing these would give me more than uh, I need oh hello I've got another one here they haven't touched nothing isn't it strange they notice things that are different and again you can see this bed has dropped down and the one issue that I've had with the plastic lining these is uh, you can see there as the soil has settled it's dragged the plastic down with it so I've got to put more plastic on there so some of those other beds you can see there look it's dropped down a little bit some of the other beds that haven't is because I've uh, been a little bit more on the last few I've been a little bit better when I've actually put the soil in but it's an easy fix just another piece of plastic stop the moisture and uh, keeping the soil off here stops it drawing the moisture out of the beds so that's why all this is heaped up so I can get some more plastic put on 
I'm being bombarded by emails from companies that want to send me stuff for free. Uh, hair and makeup and nails, uh, I thought no, that doesn't suit me, but there will be a few videos in the future of things that uh, people want to send me to review and it'll be in the title so you please yourself what you watch and what you don't watch really pleased with the barrels everything's uh, really filling up well I did get an, a question about when we get heavy storm whether to use a, a, a bigger pipe to siphon it off quicker but I haven't seen any major issues a good storm will gather me 400 litres so as they're filling up they do siphon slower but it seems to be working so I'm not going to if it ain't broke don't fix it so we've got it coming in from this end and that end and then it just seems to uh, settle itself all the way around going to cause myself a little bit of work I was going to have extra barrels here but I've decided that these barrels here are going to be finished with we'll move those move them elsewhere normally gets fed from that from the tank gravity fed uh, what I'm going to do is move these two pallet collars down just so we've got the barrels at the back I'm pointing up in the air when I should be pointing down here looking in the camera and then have the barrels here because it's more central so literally from there to here this is not a not a wasted space but when I do build the new bed I can actually build it from here and run it up and then maybe have another square foot garden this bed's quite wide so there's going to be plenty of soil a little bit of extra work but there'll be a barrel there to walk down the back of those beds and then a barrel here to to, to get the rest so just a little something that we've got to do we can do that when the parsnips are finished and when the rats have finished with my uh, carrots and this is how I protect the bottom of my pallet collars by putting them onto concrete uh, uh, there's the lining that way um, the they don't suck up the moisture from the wood chips or whatever you've got uh, and uh, contaminate you see then even though all the rain we've had these uh, do look uh, really quite dry and hopefully should last a lifetime the square foot gardening beds have done really well for me this year they've really helped me do uh, successional sowing uh, as with the uh, vertical garden we've got the tomatoes uh, coming on nicely the pink fur apple have loved it there they've been in there since uh, April carrots are gone to seed some of them and, uh, we've got loads of radish in there but I've never managed to update the board but this board is also really useful having it there the uh, green netting has also helped with the slugs I've got that on some of the beds and some not I haven't noticed any difference but it's something that I do want to do and when we get some more I'm going to raise it up again I want to get it a little bit higher just so that I haven't got to bend down so far uh, in the future the fruit cage jungle I'm definitely going to have to support all the currants and everything we've got in here exactly the same as the raspberries on plot one it does make uh, a complete difference Yes, all those red dots are blackberries. These bushes are maturing nicely and uh, that has not to be uh, bent round like these. I don't want to do it too early because it buries, uh, buries all the fruit. 
but the uh, flies are loving uh, the fruits they tend to get to them before we do and there's another 12 free pallet collars a bit more meshing I'm going to use that for the peas it's nice and light it's galvanized and that was found in a skip and my uh, apples are ready how do we know when they're ready oh dear. the birds start eating them and uh, realistically all you have to do is just move it once and uh, if they drop off they're ready <laughs> Uh, probably need a few more days, but I should probably take these anyway before uh, the birds uh, have uh, too many The uh, wildflower wildlife garden it's Volunteer sunflowers. I've been really impressed with this this year and everything's gone to seed so we should get a, a nice uh, display again next year I won't be having the potatoes here next year won't be doing so many but we're just absolutely weeds 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 and these you turn your back on those and they're suddenly uh, flowering and spread all the seeds so one one year's weed seven years seed or oh, is it the other way around basically this uh, cherries coming out and we're going to use the pallet collars too high all the way along keeping the conference pair because it does I do like the conference pair for now I might put one of the square pallet collars around there dismantle it and put this around and protect the tree using a pipe cut a pipe in half so that it doesn't damage the uh, stem and the root stock and then we'll see how this tree does and, and then we'll continue up here with the pallet collars uh, past the plum well, well it won't be there and we'll just see how these uh, apples do I don't like treating the apples don't like spraying them so we'll just see see how these apples do and we'll continue it through I'd rather have um, a nice uh, nice harvest of uh, strawberries than uh, fruit trees the grapes dying back now mainly because it's got pruned at the bottom these are those uh, square-ish pallet collars I think we've got uh, was it three eight of those so we can you got four high again and uh, those are the pallet collars from plot three got to make I'm gonna find out of everything that I've got I'm going to look for uh, several collars that I can use the polytunnel plastic on the surplus from that to make some uh, coal frames nice light ones easy to lift and then we'll use the rest uh, on those uh, raised beds on the uh, for the fruit all these strawberries like we said before I haven't done very well probably shaded I don't know and it's difficult to weed so I'm going to get it all dug out Please remember, thumbs up, thumbs down. And happy gardening to you all, my friends. Till next time. Ta-ra for now.